I'm Michael Weber, Artistic Director of Chicago's Porchlight Music Theater. Opening on Broadway at the Fifth Avenue Theater, August 19th, 1885, following its premiere at the Savoy Theater in London on March 14th that same year, Gilbert and Sullivan's The Mikado was a triumph from the beginning. Its initial production ran for 672 performances, an extraordinary run in that era, and within a year, some 150 other companies were performing the show in England and the United States. Legend has it the idea for the Mikado first sprang into W.S. Gilbert's mind when an old Japanese sword, which had been hanging on the wall of his study for years, suddenly fell from its place. Gilbert took this as inspiration and determined to use a fictionalized version of the country as an avatar in which to turn his biting satire toward English culture. At the time the Mikado was composed, Londoners had been enthusiastic about all things Japanese since the opening of the country to the West in the mid-1850s. At the time of the show's premiere, crowds were flocking to the Japanese village exhibit in the Knightsbridge area of London. This reconstructed village featured people from Japan who demonstrated their crafts and their way of life. From his own visit to the exhibit, Gilbert drew inspiration for some of the finishing details of his libretto, and he hired a Japanese woman he met there to instruct the cast in proper Japanese mannerisms, fan use, and makeup. As in much of the Gilbert and Sullivan canon, there is sharp commentary in the Mikado upon contemporary English society. For example, Gilbert makes the character Puba a government official in charge of everything, including complaints about himself, as a prominent man in a small English town might actually be. Similarly, the pivot of the plot, a law that condemns a man to death for the crime of flirting, can be seen as a comment on the outdated laws lingering in England at the time. The music, too, is cleverly wrought. In his entrance aria, A Wandering Minstrel Eye, Nanki Poo, the romantic leading man, declares himself capable of offering a song in any mood, from folksy to martial to nautical, and Sullivan set each of the subsequent verses to music of suitable character. Later, in a trio for three other male characters, I Am So Proud, Sullivan gave each character his own melody. These are presented separately, then combined into an intricate counterpoint that recalls the mastery of Johann Sebastian Bach. The Mikado may be a light and comic tale, but Sullivan saw no reason why the music could not reflect a serious level of craft, which is part of what raised Gilbert and Sullivan's productions above the standard of their competition, and why their work remains popular still. By today's standards, the Mikado presents itself as a complicated and, for some, a controversial work, created by white authors to satirize English politics and society while incorporating naively stereotypical and even racist depictions of Japanese culture, the piece wrestles with the same considerations that productions such as The King and I and Miss Saigon undergo every time they are revisited in modern revivals. Fortunately, productions such as the critically acclaimed The Mikado Reimagined, produced by the New York Gilbert and Sullivan Players in 2016, have approached the piece anew with diverse casting and behind-the-table leadership, endeavoring to envision a new approach that will ensure continued life and exposure for this significant work of art. Here on the December 5th, 1949 episode of the Railroad Hour are the stars Kenny Baker as Nanki Poo, Evelyn Case as Yum Yum, and Gordon McRae as Coco, with Arthur Q. Bryan, Verna Felton, and Lou Merrill in The Mikado. Ladies and gentlemen, the Railroad Hour. Here comes the star-studded show train. Tonight, 
Fantasy Association of American Railroads presents the famous Gilbert and Sullivan comic opera, The Mikado, starring Gordon McRae and his two guests, Kenny Baker and Evelyn Case. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and the music is arranged and conducted by Carmen Dragon. Yes, tonight another great musical hit is brought to you by the American Railroads. The same railroads that bring you most of the food you eat, the clothes you wear, the fuel you burn, and all the other things you use in your daily life. And now, here is our star, Gordon McRae. Thank you, Marvin Miller, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight, we're bringing you the charming and delightful Mikado, set in a world that only Gilbert and Sullivan could create. This is the town of Kittipu. Kenny Baker is our wandering minstrel, Nanky Poo. Lovely Evelyn Case is Yum Yum. And I've landed myself a job as the Lord High Executioner, a fellow named Coco. And all these others, well, let them introduce themselves. If you want to know who we are, we are children of Japan. Tell me where I can find a lovely maiden named Yum Yum. Who are you and why do you want to know? Gather round me while I tell you. A wandering minstrel, I, a thing of shreds and patches, of ballad songs and snatches, and dreamy lullaby. My catalog is long to every passion ranging. And through your humors changing, I tune my softest song. I tune my softest song. Are you in sentimental mood? I'm fine with you. Wanted I've patriotic ballads cut and dried For wherever our country's banner may be planted All other local banners are defied All warriors in serried ranks assemble Never quail or they conceal it if they do And I shouldn't be surprised if nations tremble Before the mighty troops of troops of key people We shouldn't be surprised if nations tremble Tremble with the mighty troops of troops And if you call for a song of the sea, we'll heave the capstan round. With a yo heave ho for the wind is free, her anchors a trip and her helms a leap, hurrah for the homeward bound. Yo ho heave ho, hurrah for the homeward bound. To lay aloft in a howling breeze may tickle a landsman's taste, but the happiest hour a sailor sees is when he's down at an inland town with his own land. And his arm around her waist A wandering 
business with Yum Yum, minstrel? Well, a year ago, I fell in love with Yum Yum, but she was engaged to a cheap tailor named Coco. And brokenhearted, I, I left town. But imagine my delight when I heard that Coco had been condemned to death for flirting. So I've come back to find my Yum Yum. It is true that Coco was condemned to death, but he was reprieved at the last moment and raised to the rank of Lord High Executioner. Coco, Lord High Executioner? Yes. And I'm Pooba, Lord High Everything Else. <laughs> First Lord of the Treasury, Lord Chief Justice, Lord High Admiral, and Lord Mayor, all roll into one. That's quite a roll. <laughs> You're wasting your time. Yum Yum is on her way home from school to marry the Lord High Executioner today. No! Ah, here comes His Excellency, Coco. <laughs> by this reception, and uh, I feel there are plenty of people whose deaths will be a distinct gain to society. Ah, uh, someday it may happen that a victim must be found. I've got a little list, I've got a little list of society offenders who might well be underground and who never would be missed. Who never would be missed There's the pestilential nuisances Who write for autographs And people who have flabby hands And irritating laughs All children who are up in dates And floor you with them flat All persons who in shaking hands Shake hands with you like that And all third persons Who on spoiling tater tates insist They'd none of them be missed They'd none of them be missed and that nice eyebrows nuisance who just now is rather rife, the judicial humorist, I've got him on the list, all funny fellows, comic men and clowns of private life, they'd none of them be missed, they'd none of them be missed. And apologetic statesmen of a compromising kind, such as, what do you call them, the thingamabob, and likewise, never mind, and, and what's his name, and also, you know who, the task of filling up the blanks I'd rather leave to you, but it really doesn't matter whom you put upon the list, for they'd none of them be missed, they'd none of them be missed. You may put them on the list, you may put them on the list. Ah, here comes Yum Yum at his schoolmates. Uh, please bow in a characteristic Japanese attitude. Yum, yum, my future bride. Kiss me. 
Uh, yes, Your Excellency. Mm, yum, yum. Uh, oh, look, who's here? It's Nanky Poo. Oh, yes, my beloved. Beloved? Who's this? Sir, I had the misfortune to love Yum Yum. Please, don't be angry. Angry? Not a bit, my boy. I love her myself. Take him away. Please. <laughs> Please. Let me have just two minutes with her. Very well. But by Japanese time, that's pretty fast. I'll be right back. Oh, Yum Yum, I love you so. I love you too, minstrel. But I must confess something, Yum Yum. I am the son of the Mikado. The son of the Mikado? Yes, you see, a few years ago, an old crow named Katisha fell in love with me. My father ordered me to marry her or go to the scaffold. I couldn't do that, so... Well, I, I left town and took up the second trombone. <laughs> and then I saw you. Uh, time's up. Oh, no. Farewell, Yum Yum. Farewell, Nanky Poo. Your Excellency, as Postmaster General, I have a special message from the Mikado. <laughs> What? If you don't execute somebody soon, he's going to have the executor executed. Oh, my, that's terrible. I'd lose space. you lose your whole head. Uh, just a minute. Ah, uh, you, Nanky Poo. Yes? What are you doing with that rope? I'm going to kill myself because you're going to marry Yum Yum. Oh, that's silly. You'll botch the job. Uh, let a professional like me do it. <laughs> Look, if, uh, if you let me marry Yum Yum today... In a month, you can behead me. That's impossible. I'm going to marry Yum Yum myself. She'll be a widow in a month, and you can marry her then. Hmm. Makes sense. I'll do it. Good. Oh. Japanese equivalent for here, yeah, here. Yeah. Hold, hold everything. <laughs> it's Katisha, the old crow. If Nanky Poo is going to marry anybody, it's going to be me. My dear woman, that's impossible. <laughs> He's going to marry Yum Yum. Your anger play very I think you will marry. I think you had better succumb and join our expression of I'm going to the Mikado. You haven't heard the last of me. We think you had Turn to the second act of the Mikado in a moment. But first, think of what you get when you buy a railroad ticket. A ticket on a railroad train buys for you a lot more than just transportation from one place to another. It buys you, for one thing, comfort and relaxation. You don't have to keep an eye on the traffic lights. You don't have to watch out for other drivers on the highway. The conductor and the engineer will run the train, and all you have to do is to relax and ride and watch America roll by your car window. And your railroad ticket buys you spaciousness. On the train, you don't have to keep your seat. You don't have to stay in one place or even in one car. There are lounges inviting you to a sociable visit with your fellow passengers. And dining cars where you may enjoy a snack or a regular meal. And when night comes, there are sleeping cars with berths and rooms inviting you to slumber, all as you ride. And when you buy a train ticket, you buy dependability. For the trains run in all kinds of weather. Most important of all, your ticket buys you safety. Safety to a degree which, year in and year out, is not even approached by any other form of passenger transportation in America. So when you buy a railroad ticket, remember what else you are buying besides transportation. You are buying relaxation and enjoyment. You are buying a look at your country as you travel through it. You are buying a chance to read or to write, to work or to talk with your fellow travelers. You are buying spaciousness and reliability and safety, all for the price of a railroad ticket. Hi, this is Porchlight Music Theater producing artistic associate Frankie Leo Bennett. If you value programming like this, please consider making a donation today at porchlightmusictheater.org. We appreciate your consideration and hope you enjoy the show. We're ready for Act Two of Gilbert and Sullivan's The Mikado, starring Gordon McRae as Coco and his guests Kenny Baker as Nanky Poo and Evelyn Case as Yum Yum. Oh, how beautiful. 
beautifully the moon is shining, for I am to marry my minstrel boy. Hello, moon. How lovely you are. You seem to smile at me. The sun whose rays are all ablaze with ever-living glory does not deny his majesty. He's going to news. Coco here has discovered a horrible law. Yes, Yum Yum. You see, when a married man is beheaded, his wife is buried alive. So if, if you marry me, I doom you to death. Oh, dear. Here's a howdy do, if I marry you. When your time has come to perish, then the maiden whom you cherish must be slaughtered too. Here's a howdy do, here's a howdy do. Pretty mess in a month or less. I must die without a wedding. Let the bitter tears I'm shedding witness my distress. Here's a pretty mess. Here's a pretty mess. Here's a state of things to her life she clings. Matrimonial devotion doesn't seem to suit her notion, but all it brings. Oh, here's a state of things. Here's a state of things. With a passion that's intense, I worship and adore. But for lots of common sense, we often do ignore. If what I say is true, then death to marry you. Here's a pretty state of things. Here's a pretty howdy do. Here's a pretty state of things. A pretty state of things. Here's a howdy do. Here's a howdy do. Here's a howdy do. For if what he says is true, I cannot, cannot marry you. Here's a pretty, pretty state of things. Here's a pretty. How do you do? Listen, everybody. The Mikado is arriving in Titipu. Oh. That old crow Katashaw has brought him. Oh, dear me. We haven't time to behead you, Nagy Poo. Oh, well, we will just say we've beheaded you. And I'll make out an affidavit and swear to it. All 15 of me will swear to it. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, dear, dear, here comes the Mikado. Leave quickly, Nike Poo. If he finds you alive, it, it, it won't look as if I beheaded you. Yes, come, yum, yum. Bow down. Bow down to the Mikado. Ah. Where is he? Where is the Lord High Executioner? Uh, here, Your Majesty. And your wishes have been attended to. An execution has taken place. Uh, we beheaded the minstrel, Nanky Poo. Nanky Poo? My dear fellow, you have executed the heir to the throne of Japan. Oh, no. And it seems to me there's a punishment for that crime. Oh, punishment. Something amusing. With the boiling oil. Oh. Or melted lead. Oh. <laughs> it will kill you. Your Majesty. <laughs> if you'll just give me two minutes, I, I, I think I can straighten this out. I grant you two minutes. Uh, Nanky Poo! Nanky Poo! Yes, yes, Coco. You've got to make an appearance to show the Mikado you've still got your head. No, sir. If I show up, Katishaw will claim me. But, uh, if... You'd marry Katisha, then I could uh, put my head back on before you even cut it off. Me marry Katisha, that old crow? When Katisha is married, existence will be as welcome as the flowers in spring. The flowers that bloom in the spring, fall la brief promise of merry sunshine. As we merrily dance and we sing, fall la we welcome the hope that they bring, fall la of a summer of roses and wine, of a summer of roses and wine. And that's what we mean when we say that a thing is welcome as flowers that bloom in the spring. Tra la 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 la, tra la 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 la, the flowers that bloom in the spring. Tra la la la, tra la la la. That bloom in the spring, well, I have nothing to do with the case. I've got to take under my wing, well, I, a most unattractive old thing, well, I, with a caricature of a face, with a caricature of a face. And that's what I mean when I say or I sing. Oh, Father, the flowers that bloom in the spring. Tra la 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 la, tra la 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 la, oh, Father, the flowers of spring. Tra la 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 la, tra la 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 la. -la. Head, Coco. There's Katisha now. Well, at least she's a little prettier than boiling oil or melted lead. Katisha! Oh, it's you. The beast who beheaded my beloved. Katisha, I love you. Huh? <laughs> if you don't marry me, I shall perish on the spot. Oh, don't be silly. Nobody ever died of a broken heart. Oh, Katisha, you don't know what you're saying. Listen. On a tree by a river, a little tom tit sang willow, tit willow, tit willow. And I said to him, Dickie Bird, why do you sit singing willow, tit willow, tit willow? Is it weakness of intellect, birdie, I cried, or a rather tough worm in your little inside? With a shake of his poor little head, he replied, Oh, willow, tit willow, tit willow. He slapped at his chest as he sat on that bow, singing willow, tit willow, tit willow. And a cold perspiration bespangled his brow. Oh, willow, tit willow, tit willow. He sobbed and he sighed and a gurgle he gave. Then he plunged himself into the billowy wave. And an echo rose from a suicide grave. Now I 
feel just as sure as I'm sure that my name isn't Willow, it will, it will. That was blighted affection that made him exclaim, Oh, Willow, it will, it will. And if you remain callous and obdurate, I shall perish as he did, and you will know. Once. Then I'll marry you. Oh, oh I'm a silly little goose. Time's up, time's up. Make ready for the boiling oil. Your Majesty, everything's been cleared up. Nanky Poo, come out, come out. I'm going to marry Katisha. Father. Well, how did this happen? He still seems to have his head. Your Majesty, it's this way. When you say, let a thing be done, it's as good as done. You said, execute somebody. So... Nanky Poo was as good as dead. A very satisfactory explanation. As Lord High Toastmaster, I call for the Japanese equivalent of They All Lived Happily Ever After. just a moment. Meanwhile, this is Gordon McRae giving a vote of thanks to our excellent supporting cast, Arthur Q. Bryan, Werner Felton, and Lou Merrill. The Mikado, of course, is by Gilbert and Sullivan, and it was adapted for radio by Lawrence and Lee. The Railroad Hour is brought to you each week at this time by the American Railroads. These railroads are your hometown partners. They provide jobs for your neighbors. They buy supplies in your town, and they pay local taxes just as you and I. Thus, the railroads are more than just railroads. They are citizens, and mighty important citizens, in your hometown. And now, here are Kenny Baker and Evelyn Case. Thank you, everybody, and thank you, Gordon. We're back from the fantastic town of Titipu to the fantastic town of Hollywood. It was fun, Gordon. Thanks for asking us. Oh, you were wonderful. Yum, yum, Evelyn. But uh, Nanky Poo here was a little better at the hanky-panky. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I got the girl, but I bet you get the girl next week, Gordon. Well, I wondered if you were going to say that, Kenny. <laughs> I think you might be right. We're presenting Sigmund Romberg's romantic opera of the Desert Song. And our guest will be the lovely light opera star, Dorothy Sarnoff. We'll be listening. Good night. Sure will. Good night, everybody. Good night. <laughs> well, it looks as though ready to pull out. And so until next week, Goodbye. <laughs> Mikado was presented by special arrangement with Tam's Whitmark Music Library. Gordon McRae appeared by arrangement with Warner Brothers, producers of A Hasty Heart, starring Ronald Reagan, Patricia Neal, and Richard Todd. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff. Our music arranged and conducted by Carmen Dragon. This is Marvin Miller saying goodbye until next week for the Association of American Railroads. Next, it's the voice of Firestone on NBC. Today's star, Evelyn Case, began singing in San Antonio before pursuing a career in New York in opera, musicals, and on numerous radio broadcasts. She appeared in film shorts, notably as the lead in the Roy Mack vehicle Projection Room in 1939, which seems to have also been the very first film appearance for the teenaged Gower Champion.
Evelyn Case made one Broadway appearance in the short-lived revival of the musical The Time, The Place, and The Girl in 1942. For several years, she was a featured soloist at Radio City Music Hall, and during World War II, she toured the British Isles for the USO before she sang in the first opera televised by NBC, La Boheme. Kenny Baker was a vocalist and radio personality who first gained recognition as a regular on the Jack Benny program from 1935 to 1939. The popular tenor starred on Broadway in One Touch of Venus in 1943 with Mary Martin and introduced the principal songs from the show, including Speak Low. Kenny Baker began his musical film career in 1934. His first starring role was in Mr. Dodd Takes the Air in 1937 with Jane Wyman. He took the hit song Remember Me by Harry Warren and Al Dubin to number one on the hit parade, and he introduced Love is Here to Stay by the Gershwins in the Goldwyn Follies of 1938. His last film appearance was in Calendar Girl in 1947. Theaters across the country need your support now more than ever. We hope you'll consider a donation to Porchlight Music Theater today. Just go to porchlightmusictheater.org. Until next time on Classic Musicals from the Golden Age of Radio, I'm Michael Weber. Michael Weber